Hi, this is Dr. Mindy Curry. I'm a naturopathic doctor in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area and have an office in Milwaukee. And today I'm here to tell you about the linden tree, also known as the lime tree. It's a, of a species of tilia. The tilia species are a variety of different species of the tilia tree that grow and they all have very similar medicinal properties. Um, these are very commonly found in um, yards. They're uh, imported um, ornamental, found often in yards. There's whole neighborhoods in Portland that just are lined with these along the sidewalk. And that's really amazing in the spring like it is now, because you can just walk into these neighborhoods and smell this amazing honey lime scent, kind of a citrusy lemon lime honey scent perf just perfusing the air and drawing in the bees. This is an excellent tree for pollinators. If you're trying to figure out what to landscape with, this is a, one of my favorites. And also one of my favorites for making medicine out of this stage of the tilia, the tilia blossom in the spring is when the medicine is the best. And that's when we like to harvest this. You can make medicine out of the lovely flowers, the bracts, the leaves, even the bark. And it's even been burnt into a charcoal and the charcoal can even be used in medicine. But I'm not gonna do that today. Today I'm just gonna talk about a couple different uses as tea and tincture and uh, the ways I like to use them. This is a really great one for relaxing and soothing. So it's great for any kind of stress or uh, mental, mentally anxious kind of states. Also for r relaxing in migraine headaches, headaches of stress, headaches, circulation um, related headaches. This is a great tea for improving circulation issues and it's often used in formulas for hypertension. It's a mildly hypotensive means it'll reduce your blood pressure just a little bit and in a formula with other things that can be significant enough along with diet and lifestyle to really keep your blood pressure managed better than maybe just by doing your old bad habits and taking medication um, part of a, a whole treatment plan this can be a really great one for you. It's also great for kids that are having colds and flus because they like the flavor of this. So you can give them a, a nice warm cup of tilia or linden or lime blossom tea and they'll enjoy it probably. And it'll help soothe um, some of their congestion and any kind of inflammation. This one's good for the lungs as well. Um, yeah. And this is the right time to pick it, kind of in the spring. You want to hit these flowers when they're just perfectly healthy flowers. Later on, when they start to shrivel up and become more brown, like this little one over here, they are still okay to use, but they're going to be a lot more sedating. And actually, I don't mind that effect, so I'm, I'm not going to go out of my way to remove these ones, shall we say. But what I will do is just just um, basically you want to just prune this tree in the spring take out some of these branches that are low hanging maybe going into the paths just kind of cut them off there that'll stimulate new growth it'll make a nice bushier healthy tree and you'll get your medicine you want to take the leaves the bark the flowers and we'll take those back into the kitchen and process them. Let's take another look at this linden tree or lime tree or tilia tree. It's a very large tree. They grow very tall. And one of the distinguishing features is their bark, which uh, tends to be rather gray and have these almost sheet-like appearance. You can see these kind of flat kind of sheets almost. 
that distinguish the linden tree from other trees. And blotchy gray flattened bark. Then when you look up at the leaves, the leaves are almost like little hearts. They're quite lovely in their own regard. But of course the flowers is what we're most interested in. And these flowers right now show that it's time to make medicine. And they're just these little clusters of beautiful little yellow sunbursts. Lots of pollen just hanging all over the place. When you harvest these, you'll get covered in that pollen. It's somewhat wonderful. Hey, okay, we're back in the kitchen and I've got my branches. These are pretty much whole branches, you can see, that I've taken. They were stuck down on the path anyhow, and so we've trimmed the tree nicely for the season. And uh, we're going to make some medicine out of that. Everybody's going to be happy, win-win situation. Um, this, of course, again is linden, or the lime tree. And uh, I want to take a good look at one of these little leaves here. Um, maybe you can see, I can see that there's kind of a shiny, like a oily shine on this leaf. It doesn't seem to be coming across necessarily, but um, trust me, there's like a really oily sheen on each of these leaves. And that is a big part of what is the medicine. And also, um, there's a lot of pollen and honey on these flowers here. They're, they're sticky, they will get sticky on your hands, and that's the medicine, and we don't really want to wash that away. On the other hand, there's insects and spiders in there, so what we're going to do now is we're going to um, process this, but we're going to try to find a way to do it where um, there is no... no con okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this branch and we're going to process it by basically looking for any contaminants, any insects, removing them, removing any of the pieces that look not very healthy. And um, we're going to get down to just small bits of stem and not these big, huge stems. Um, and we're going to do that basically with a pair of scissors. It's uh, more of a visual thing. Look at it. We've got this nice piece here. It's pretty good all over, so put that in the pot. Here we got some bad stuff, so we don't put that in the pot. Throw that away. Look it around. Take off any leaves or flowers that look like they're contaminated with anything. Knock off any insects. Basically. So you'll find some spiders as you go through here. Just take care of them. Um, ants love this stuff. They come with a certain amount of ants, but if you leave this around your house, you and your house is susceptible to those little sugar ants, they will come and take your linden crop. You'll just find a big swarm of ants. So once you get it in the house, you want to process it pretty quickly if there's any chance of ants.
so we're done. We've got our big baskets of uh, fresh processed linden flower and leaf and a little bit of stem because the, the stem is still fine. And we've looked over these carefully and made sure there wasn't a lot of contaminants in there since we, this is a, a medicine. We don't, really don't want to wash all the medicine off. All the sticky honey on there is what we want. Can you, can you see any of it? I can sure see quite a lot of just sticky honey on this leaf. I don't think it's showing up, but it's there. Just know it's there. You can feel it. My hands are tacky now. Eh, eh, eh. And we don't take and use everything. A lot of it just goes to the compost pile. All this here is just sticks, too many leaves, things that were kind of not prime, shall we say. Anything that looks old or holy or been bitten on or had any kind of egg, larval eggs or anything. All that's been cut off, and now what we should have here for more processing is just quite a lot of really great, really great linden flowers, bracts, and leaves and stems. And we'll, we'll keep looking at these. It can be easy to miss some stuff, but the most part, we, we do kind of go over these three times. Look at um, a good branch take is the first thing. You look at the branch before you cut it down off the tree. Make sure it's not gross. Then you get home and you take off any material that looks wrong. And then as you process it one more time into your next level, because we're going to be taking this and turning it into dried teas and into tinctures and into other things. Um, then we'll look at it again as we go through and inspect for quality at each stage. And that, as long as you've taken this from a good place where it's not contaminated by a lot of, you know, it's not right on the street with big plumes of four lane traffic exhaust fumes coming in there. This should be fairly good if it's just out in the field, out in nature. It's good to go. Okay, here we're back with the dried linden. Dried it for a few days up in a cool, dark room. And you can see it's very dry, very papery. It's a very light herb. If you actually weighed this, it really wouldn't weigh a whole lot. It's just almost nothing to it. It's like little bits of paper. A little bit of stem on there. But what we're going to do now is make a tea. But we're not going to just make a standard tea. In this case, we're going to make what I like to call a linden lemonade. And that's basically a, a linden tea with lemons. But uh, there's a couple ways you can make the linden tea um, because of the properties of the linden. If you use the whole linden, um, you get a very delightful tea just by itself, just by steeping it in hot boiling water covered for about in half an hour. will give you a really delightful, just a, a standard linden tea. Um, but if you crush these up, you'll get a slightly different kind of tea because when you release, when you cut these up, you're going to release a lot more of the mucilage compounds in here. So you're going to get a more slimy tea if you're choosing to start out your tea with a, a chopped linden base. And that slime, that mucilage is actually really good for digestion. So it can be something you want to encourage. And indeed, if you want to encourage more of that uh, mucilaginous slime, you would steep it the normal amount, but then set it in the fridge for a day um, or just overnight even. And by the next morning, you'll get a lot more 
of the beneficial mucilage. But uh, right now we're going to start out by by chopping up some of these lemons. And we're gonna do the whole linden flowers, the whole linden flowers, leaves and stems in our tea this time. Okay, let's put all those lemon slices into our jar. Okay, and then I'm just going to stuff the whole linden, whole dried linden, and you can buy whole dried linden sometimes too perfectly legit, but if you got it, use it. I'm just going to stuff quite a bit of this whole dried linden into my jar. <clears throat> Seems like a pretty good amount for a pretty strong tea. back with the hot water, boiling hot water, and I'm just going to want to pour that on. Now I'm going to let that cool for a little while before I add the lid. Also, I would like to at some point add a bit of honey if possible. But in the meantime, let's move over to making our linden honey. This is another great way to get linden into children. If you're talking for a cold and flu or just an anxiety state to try to relax children. They love the flavor of linden. It's such a nice limey citrus flavor. Now in this case, I would like to increase the surface area for extraction a bit. You don't want to do this with fresh leaf because the moisture content will be too much and it won't preserve very well. It might spoil, but if you do it with dried linden, with the honey, it should preserve pretty well. Basically, I'm gonna crunch up all these little linden flowers, leaves, bracts, and stems into my mini crock pot. You can really see that a big branch of linden can just shrink down to almost nothing. Once it's dry, it's not even that much really left in the crock pot. And then go ahead and add uh, a nice honey, preferably a local honey, but uh, use what you got available. And I'm just going to get that honey in here. Want it to basically cover the linden that I have in the bowl. 
and I'm going to turn that up to warm. I'm really not trying to boil this honey. The rest of it will go into the Linden lemonade. I don't like it too sweet. But for those that do like it sweet, the linden honey will be really nice. And then once I let this sit on warm for probably a couple days, maybe, or at least overnight, let it sit overnight to a couple days, that'll make a really great linden honey that I can strain out into a jar and then use that as a delightful way to get a little linden any time of the year. It's a great preservative. Honey is an excellent preservative. Um, otherwise, I will take this Linden tea, Linden lemonade, Linden lemonade tea, if you're more precise, <laughs> and uh, let it cool off. Once it's cool, cap it, stick that in the fridge overnight, and that will give me a really great Linden lemonade. It'll bring out the flavors and the lemons, let it sit overnight like that. But it'll also really get the, the good medicine to come out of the leaves and linden flowers and it'll all mix together and be a real delight. We'll check in with that in the morning and see how that's worked out. Okay, we're back here the next day and we've got the Linden Lemonade. Let's go ahead and see how that's doing. It looks absolutely gorgeous. That's something to get some jaw drops at a, at a party. If there were parties anymore, <laughs> someday there'll be parties again. I like to use this little, it's a strainer in a funnel. Works really great for a lot of my needs. Smaller batches of stuff. Let's get some ice in there. And that just looks delightful, doesn't it? A delicious linden lemonade. Mmm. Yes, just a hint of sweetness. You can taste the difference between the linden citrus flavor and the citrus citrus flavor. Lemon citrus versus the linden citrus. It's really good. And a hint of honey. And that honey flavor comes both from the linden and the honey, so it's kind of a lemon linden, honey linden deliciousness. Okay. <clears throat> Set all that aside and let us get to the honey. The linden honey has been on the warm overnight. We just want to take that and put that into what I have here is just a little kitchen mill with some cheesecloth in it. I'm just going to pour that honey down into that. <laughs> Make sure the sides stay up. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they mess with you. There we go. And it's nice to have the honey warm like this, or it's, it's, it's slightly hot, in that it's a lot easier to go through the cheesecloth that way. And it'll just sit there for a little while doing its thing. You can also give it a little press, kind of press it out. You can see that delicious linden honey just coming right out there. 
just gonna let that hang give it a right now I'm just gonna let that hang with a little bit of weight on it it seems to be coming out just fine without any help from the masher kind of a brutal looking thing but it's fun it works um, I, I do this for small batches too I've got a different press they use for tinctures I will show one of these days you don't look in that <laughs> There it is. <laughs> there it is. The linden honey. Put that in a jar. And then I can pull that out. Whenever I want a little linden, I might use a little linden honey in my linden tea, or if I want any other kind of tea to have a nice linden background, add some of that linden honey in there. Great for giving to children. A little bit of sugar makes the medicine go down. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> So don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area. And I also have an office in Milwaukee.